Good evening, and on behalf of Australian Lawyers for Human Rights, welcome to this premiere screening of Hard to Believe. Only about 70 years ago, the world was shocked by the mass slaughter of the Jewish people by the Nazi state. People were tortured and killed and experimented on for no other reason than their religion. It is an understatement to say it was hard to believe. The world said, never again. And thus was formed the United Nations with a central purpose of promoting and encouraging respect for human rights. The General Assembly would proclaim the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It recognised the inherent dignity and worth of the human person and the freedoms of speech and belief as among the highest aspirations of the common people. It is hard to believe that in the 21st century, 68 years after this proclamation, a nation which voluntarily became a party to the Charter of the United Nations would not only imprison people for their beliefs, but would harvest organs from them. <coughs> that such a nation would insult the dignity of its victims in the most horrific way, using them as spare parts for those willing to pay. The most recent estimates in the 680-page report by David Kilgore, Ethan Gutman and David Matas provides conservative estimates of 60,000 to 100,000 transplants per year. It concludes that the majority of organs are sourced from Uyghurs, Tibetans, House Christians and primarily Falun Gong practitioners. You will hear from the authors of this report tonight. But what can be done against a powerful nation such as China? What good is a 68-year-old declaration against such might? Well, it serves as a reminder that such evil can be overcome and its words are a rallying cry to action. Professor Jacob Levy in Israel remembered what happened 70 years ago. His father was a refugee from a Nazi concentration camp. He helped his nation pass a law prohibiting local health and insurance funds financing patients who go to China for organ transplants. You will hear from him tonight as well. Similar action can be taken easily here. In fact, there is a bill ready to go before the New South Wales Parliament to make it illegal for a New South Wales resident to engage in the organ harvesting trade overseas. But it needs support. After tonight, you will know what is happening in China. I urge you to contact your local MPs and let them know too. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights proclaims the recognition of the inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable rights of the all members of the human family as a foundation of freedom, justice, and peace in the world. If we want such a world, we cannot afford to sit dumbfounded in disbelief at what is happening in China. We cannot let this grotesque assault on human dignity go unchallenged. And we have no excuse to turn a blind eye and do nothing. that sets the tone very appropriately. Thank you, Nathan. And our next speaker is Dr. Seb Ozdowski. He's a human, right, human rights ad advocate and researcher with a broad background in law and sociology. Seb is known for his defense of the human rights of refugees, especially child asylum seekers detained in Australia, people with disabilities and people with mental illness as well as for his contribution to Australian multicultural policies. He served on the Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission as Australian Human Rights Commissioner and Disability Discrimination Commissioner. As Australian Human Rights Commissioner and Disability Discrimination Commissioner. Currently Seb is Director of the Equality and Diversity at Western, is Director of Equity and Diversity at Western Sydney University and also adjunct professor with Sydney University Centre of Peace and Conflict Studies. This evening, he's representing event co-sponsor, the Australian Council for Human Rights Education. Please welcome Seb. Well, thank you.
thank you, Lee, very much for your generous introduction. Possibly a bit too long, but I know it's better to be here. It's better to be here than outside because it's so cold. It's so many, uh, so good to see so many of you here. So welcome uh, to everyone, especially to distinguished guests in the audience, to fellow uh, DAFA practitioners, and to the sponsors of the evening today. Allow me also to acknowledge the Gadigal people as traditional custodians of the land we are, uh, we are gathered at. Now we came here tonight to view Hard to Believe documentary film and to help uh, rising awareness of organ transplant abuse in China. As you possibly know, the prosecution of Falun Gong started in 1999 some 17 years ago, and it has all hallmarks of genocide. Uh, Falun Gong practitioners are simply murdered, so the corneas, hearts, lungs, liver, trans, uh, kidneys could be stolen for sale to commercial customers. To put it simply, People's Republic of China established a murder industry for profit, and I don't worry about it being filmed, and saying it. The first document which reported it, it was Bloody Harvest by David Kilgore, former Secretary of State of Canada, and David Matas, human rights lawyer, and I know both of them well. The new report, which uh, just hit the streets in June this year, updated the previous report and claimed as Nathan said, that 60 to 100,000 transplants per year are done. Officially, when one looks at Chinese statistics, it's less than 10,000. So there is huge, huge discrepancy, but still even 10,000, it's sometimes difficult to explain. But what is of particular concern, that the use of Nazi or Soviet-like white propaganda campaign to dehumanize the practitioners, Falun Gong and other victims of this procedure are shown as being dangerous people, either a nationalist or a religious sect, who will come to your Sabbath to steal your children and your money. And now we are starting the Olympics. Would you know that during the Beijing Olympics, laws were passed in China to ensure that Falun Gong practitioners do not participate in Olympics, either as sport people or as uh, people who came just to see performance there. The film we'll watch tonight, Hard to Believe, got a very appropriate title, because simply it is difficult to believe that such heinous crime is taking place in the 21st century, but it's also hard to believe that there is so little knowledge, so little opposition, so little public authorities willing to say no to the Chinese. And I agree with my previous speaker, use this opportunity, learn and inform others. We need to protest it, we need to impact on our governments so they do protest. Thank you very much for listening to me, and thank you to me, and thank you very much for coming to support this premiere of the film. Thank you.